Hey everyone, it's Vince 12 saying in again, and welcome to another rendition of Back Pasta Critiques. I'm here alone. I wanted to do this with um, Jacob, but we constantly have problems with um, recording, so unfortunately I couldn't include him like I initially planned to, but, well, whatever, you know, you make the best of what you have, and I'm the only one here, so I gotta make the best of me, even though that's a long, a very tall order to make. So, this is Hokey Pokey, the Hokey Pokey on the uh, Creepypasta Wiki. There are no crediting tags, so, well, whatever. <clears throat> Let us begin. Do you remember those old childhood nursery rhymes? Then you actually research them and find out they have, a dark, have dark origins? For those who don't know, I will give an example. Ring Around the Rosies was based on the Black Plague, or Black Death, whatever you want to call it, and described the symptoms of the sickness. Such curiosity made me suspicious about one particular dance-slash-song. You may well remember it. The Hokey Pokey. You would think that someone would be interested in the matter enough. It's a ring of people doing a weird dance. Now, try and convince me that you do not find it a least bit suspicious. Not really, because... I have better things to do in my life than to wonder what the fucking origin is for the Hokey Pokey. And why don't you write a creepypasta about Bluebird in my window? But there was nothing. No suspicions raised on the internet. No forums that had anything concerning the Hokey Pokey. Nothing. But I wasn't satisfied. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... The fact that you're dedicating so much time to a nursery rhyme is just amusing. I had to know for sure that there was nothing wrong or disturbing about this dance, so I decided to conduct my own test. I bought a CV I bought a CD player and a CD that contained a hokey pokey saw on it and locked it in up in the house and closed the curtains. I didn't want I didn't want anyone to see what I was about to do or my reputation would be sabotaged. The fact that you posted this online unironically would mean that your reputation has already been shot to hell. I put the CD into the player and listened to the word. Can you just? I'm pretty sure YouTube exists, dude. I put the CD into the player and just listened to the words the first time around. The familiar cheery music greeted me. The familiar music and cheery voice greeted me. You put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, you put your right foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> Yep, that's the right one. I put it to the back. I put it back to the start and prepared myself. I pressed play again, and this time danced to the silly song. I danced the full song ten times in a row, only stopping to replay it. When I started to get a strange feeling, the feeling I was doing something wrong. <laughs> Nigga, that's your right foot. I said left foot, you dumb bitch. That'll be the end of the story. That's how I would end it. I continued for another three times, which was then was a part of, which was when a part of me wanted to stop. I had the most uncomfortable feeling that something was actually happening, and like a fool, I continued another two times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, you're saying what I'm thinking about you, but for entirely different reasons. As a, a person, a, a grown individual, I assume took the time out of the day to investigate the origins of the Hokey Pokey. I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong, there's something wrong with having interest in certain things like that. I have interests in mundane topics at times too, but this person decided to quote-unquote make an experiment, and that experiment entailed doing the fucking Hokey Pokey a million times in a row and expecting there to be some... <sighs> I don't know, some magical reward for doing so. The feel uh no three times. At the end of the fifteenth time of going through the song and dancing to it, I, the feeling went away. I was about to re I was about to replay when I heard something happen. So when I heard something. It was laughter. But that's impossible. No one couldn't have well, what could have gotten in without triggering my alarms? Hey, you can't judge me for setting them up. I don't want anyone to see me doing the hokey pokey. Was it just a laser tripwire to shoot someone on sight just because you don't want to be embarrassed? I listen for any more sounds. Anything that would alert me 
to someone else's presence in the house. Silence. It must have been in my imagination. No one could be in here. I breathed a sigh of relief and pre pressed the play button again. This time, the song was skipping and distorted. You put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, or to, uh, and you shake all the way up with the hokey pokey, uh, all about hokey pokey, spankity, spankity, spankity. No. That's what it's all about. I cut in there, leaving. It cut out there, leaving me feeling very disturbed. What was it? Was this it? I had to. I had just solved the mystery that no one has ever inquired about. Or maybe the batteries on your fucking CD player were running out. Unfortunately, things weren't over yet. I waited there in silence, pondering my findings. What findings? Your fucking boombox or whatever just decided to peter out. It's. My curious. Let me see, uh. When a sound broke the uneasy silence and made me wish I hadn't done any of this, that my curiosity hadn't gotten the best of me, that creepy laughter came again. This time I knew it wasn't my imagination, as I began to hear running footsteps echoing throughout the house. Footsteps were that of bare feet slapping on the ground, and the laughter was growing more eager. Where was it coming from? I couldn't pick up which direction the footsteps were. I slowly backed up to the front door. It was close now, I could hear it. My hand reached for the handle, and I turned the lock. My back was to the door. I wanted to see the great big mystery behind the hokey <laughs> I wanted to see the great big mystery behind the hokey po- That was about the hokey pokey. Excuse me. Even if it was a big risk, I had to know. Surprisingly, the door- the lock didn't turn. I looked at it and tried again, the same result. What was happening? I put the I put more force and the lock snapped. The door was deadlocked and I couldn't get out. The footsteps were getting closer. Instinctively I ran to one of the windows and tried to open it, but it was nailed shut. I grabbed my chair and So this ethereal being that is magically summoned when you uh do the hokey pokey, um, while you were muddying about and just dancing repeatedly, it had time to Nail your window shut, deadlock your door, and you didn't notice it because you were too busy with your oh-so-compelling experiment. I'm just envisioning you, like, doing the hokey pokey while this little whatever the fuck it is is walking around with, like, tools and nails in its mouth as it ha goes to hammer the window shut. I'd be whistling a jaunty tune while it does so. Instinctively, okay, whatever. But the chair. I grabbed the chair and smashed it against the window, but the chair broke and the window was intact. Okay, so it replaced the windows, too. I swear I noticed something different. I know, I swore, and I noticed that something was different. The laughing and running footsteps had stopped. I found a shift in the atmosphere. Something was not right. I stopped dead and turned my head right at the front door, watching me with eyes of insanity was... I... To be honest, I don't really know what it was. It was practically a skeleton, with a thin layer of flesh hanging from its bones. Its eyes were hollow black sockets with a flaming orange iris that stared into the soul. It had shaggy black hair that came down to the front of its face, and its mouth plastered into a permanent sick smile with needle-sharp teeth that were yellowed and blackened with decay. With a laugh at madness, it rushed at me. I bolted, adrenaline rushing through my body. I had to get out! But how? How could I escape when every door was deadlocked, every window was nailed shut and seemingly unbreakable? The, fo the running footsteps and the creepy laughter began again, causing me to panic even more. I had to stop this, to just pause everything so I could think straight again. The phone! I had to get to the phone- I swear to god, if this ends with him like pl doing the hokey pokey in reverse or some shit, I'm gonna like die right here now. <laughs> I had to get to the phone. I took a sharp turn to my left, and I grabbed the phone from the charger. With that, I took a loop around the front door to get to the stairwell leading up the stairs. That was when the creature suddenly cut in front of my path. It wasn't stupid. It knew exactly what I was doing, and moved quickly to prevent me from getting where I needed to go. I sprinted back in the other direction and tossed its head back in- and it tossed its head back in Matt Lather and get, continued to give chase. 
I ran around the house trying to confuse it so I had time to think. I had to get somewhere. Somewhere the hokey <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere th Oh my god, how did you not how did you write this and not realize it was dead on arrival, man? I had to get somewhere. Somewhere the hokey pokey couldn't follow. My subconscious mind acted for me, steering me to a sharp steering me sharp into the bedroom and slamming the door shut. It didn't lock this time though, and the hot key and oh sorry, the hokey pokey opened it, but I managed to get my back against the door in time to arrest any more progress. I was fighting for my life, and the giggling monster, I'm not sure what it was going to do to me, but I didn't really want to find out. I pushed harder trying to force the door show, but the hokey pokey was stronger than it looked, and it matched my resistance with its strength. I was beginning to lose hope, to, lo to beginning to tire, but then I thought about those people. Not one of them knowing the dark truth about the hokey pokey, <laughs> not questioning it. I can only assume that there were people who thought about it, and did put it to rest, but... And then put it to the test, but then something happened to prevent them from getting the word out. This... This twisted nightmare happened. I then thought about the... The... I then thought about the popple of the future who would do this. Never knowing the danger, someone like me, I couldn't let this happen. These thoughts made me push harder. My heart soared when I actually started winning, which gave me new strength to continue. It's you fucking hero. I tr could tell the Hokey Pokey was, knew what was happening, as it made one last desperate move. It reached out and grabbed my right arm. I m it must have expected a different result, as my body spasmed, forcing me to force the jaw show. With a, sick a sickening crunch and an ear-splitting howl followed after, retreating footsteps were heard, and a wail accompanied them. I looked down on the ground. A pool of black lick was the forearm of the Hokey Pokey. Well, I guess he put the wrong arm in. <laughs> It was twitching for a few seconds before it stopped, and laid there for a few seconds before disappearing in a black shroud. I locked the door and leaned against it. I waited for ten minutes just to make sure it was really gone before I dared to unlock the door. And even then I didn't quite have the courage to open it. I first waited, just in case it made some, it made some sort of reaction before, the door, before opening the door up a crack and peeking through it. To my relief, the coast was clear. The hokey pokey was nowhere to be seen, or heard for that matter. Now I am writing my findings. I hope the Hokey Pokey does not return for me, although I am almost certain that it will. So I took the liberty of buying a gun. Yes, I did get out. It turns out it left upstairs as they were, as a, only a madman or someone with time to think would have tried to escape through them. And I asked the police to remove the deadlocks. They will be coming this morning, and in spite of this, I can't really complain. I am tired now, so I will get some sleep after a long day. In preparation for another big day tomorrow. Wait, what was that? Was that moving over my bed? Or was that was me shifting my weight on it? Hold on. I hear laughter. Oh, God, no. It's back. It's... Yeah, uh... You had time to talk. I hate that cliche so much. I, I really do. Even the cliche of someone basically, like, cataloging their thoughts as they're being killed or something, like, the, the, where the narration takes place within their own head. Uh, even that is more appropriate than the, I'm going to type this as I get violently murdered and I hear a noise in my house bullshit. Because you could at the very least imagine that they're in some kind of weird plane of existence where they can recollect what happened to them. Like maybe there's some sort of afterlife looking at things in hindsight. It's a stretch, but at least I can understand where they're coming from. Let me see him look. What is this nigga over here doing trying to actually articulate why this story doesn't work? That's my job. Whole stream of Okay, let me read this. This is from uh by Squid Man Squid Mainscape. Put your head in, put your head out, put your head in and bang it all about, blah blah blah. Pokey pokey, magic or trickery, street ice cream, what? I think there's ways of potential here. Also the whole no theories about the hokey pokey is gonna correct. Case in point. Poke your whole self in and check it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself the other. To understand these words, let us consider that the words were written by Wolfgang von Goethe. A goth, excuse me. 
once until one is committed, there is hesitancy, a chance to draw back, always in effectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth to ignorance which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. The moment when one definitely commits oneself, then the whole stream of events and issues from decision, raising in one's favor all matters of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance which no man could have dreamed would come would have come to this way, his way whatever you do or whatever dream you do begin it boldness has genius power and magic in it, in it. begin it now frankly i think goes sums up the meaning of the song quite frequently you commit to your whole self you shake it all about engage yourself in life fully in life and living and then the hokey, then the hokey pokey magic happens the magic isn't something that we do it is something that happens when we are fully committed. From a Buddhist perspective, this is called magic is easily and rationally explained. Given that something happens because the conditions exist to make it happen, then by committing ourselves to the project, a cause, and great spiritual awareness, whatever, by committing to ourselves and taking action, we are creating a favorable conditions as God's world, all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance which no one could have dreamed of would come along. Okay, that, that question was kind of pointless. Uh, that that's common. I mean, it was interesting, but I think you're. I, I don't really see it necessary to pontificate on this very mundane, mediocre story, like below mediocre. Four out of ten. Yuck. Sorry, but it just isn't very good. Quite silly for a hokey pokey monster. Honestly, I don't like the whole as I type hit it after me thing because you would still have to click post in order for anyone to see it on the wiki. So six out of ten. Six out of ten, really. This is being really too generous. This is a little creepy, but it made me laugh at the end. Some somehow the idea of hokey pokey monster just silly. Well, let me see. Uh, oh, this is from years ago, so this guy ain't gonna even read this. It's five out of five, and the narrator died. The narrator died. Narrator did the hokey pokey. <laughs> well, at the very least, this guy seems to be the very least, a little bit self-effacing. Let's see. Uh, this pause in a nutshell. I did the hokey pokey 15 times, and then a skeleton popped out. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I think I've basically voiced all my, uh, problems with this story. It really boils down to just someone not understanding what to do with, uh, I don't know, like, the, I like the idea of someone essentially finding a darker origin behind something and coming up with something, but when you bring up, like, the, the, the Ring Around the Rosies, it's based upon, it's based on the, bub the bubonic plague and the symptoms of the plague, which is true. And a lot of people were genuinely surprised to hear that, and rightfully so. It's a it's a kid's nursery rhyme, so to hear that it has such dark connotations is very jarring, and it's very unnerving. And it, instead of operating under that kind of uh, principle, under that kind of method of unnerving the reader, you decide to basically go down to the very bottom of the barrel and like, oh, generic monster came and attack us. Ooh, scoop, spoopy. So if you do the pokey poke, like, and the fact that he, after a while, just named it the hokey pokey, like, I don't know, like, that, 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 that was very arbitrary. Not to mention the fact that he seemed to, like, Th this character of yours didn't seem to, like, think of anything like a rational person was. Like, w or would, rather. Uh, he wants to know the origin of the Hokey Pokey. So, instead of going on Google... And it's, bear in mind, like, th this must take place in modern-day setting because he decided to catalog his thoughts and then post it online before he got killed. So, instead of going on Google and to search, uh... Origins of the Hokey Pokey, he instead decided to do this really stupid and nonsensical, uh, just fucking this this ring around here, and like, oh, the only way I can find out the origin of the Hokey Pokey if I do it repeatedly. Okay, uh, popular. Let me see. Uh, probably in ski crowds, uh, night late night nineteen fifty. So yeah. Basically, yeah, I just looked it up right now. It only took me, like, five seconds to really find out a little bit about it. Like, 
the fact that this person is so dead set on finding out about this stupid dance, and yet won't take the few seconds in order to go and do a basic fucking Google search. I mean, like, that's one of the things that immediately kills this story. And right here, you're like, yeah, I'm supposed to be unnerved by, oh, it's the Hokey Pokey song, but it's distorted, so it's scary. Uh, no. So, uh, yeah, that's my two cents on this. Uh, this story is bad. Uh, doesn't really come as a surprise to me. The person who wrote this. I think, let me see your username down here. I, I think you did respond to a few things. Uh, the Walshinator. I actually do like that name. And I like your icon. It looks cool. But, uh, yeah. Uh, no, no offense, Matt. No ill will. Just being critical about something. And if you disagree, feel free to comment. Um, if you enjoyed this video, rate, like, comment, subscribe. I want to be in the habit of posting... Uh, just one, uh, a back, a random positive critique, uh, with just one story per, for video, no matter how short the story may be, and, uh, I would like to hear your people, your, 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 uh, opinion on that, and whether or not you prefer that over the really long videos I do when I, when I don't have enough material to work with, when I just, like, uh, choose three stories at once. One of the problems with that is that uh, I kind of have a hard time putting all all the titles, all the names in the title, and I want people to basically have their focus be on one story at a time. And I know it can be rather uh, tiring to have to slog through an entire video to hear a story that you might actually have interest in. So uh, stay tuned for next time, and uh, yeah, peace out. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. You know, you know the drill.